rides as well. Okay, thanks, uh, Ekta, for that. Uh, Aditya Khemka is joining us, fund manager at Incred PMS. Uh, Aditya, good afternoon. Uh, this really, I mean, if this has to be a definition of a howler, it's uh, it's really Solara. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's a stock which did well last year. It was a four or five bagger, and now we have these problems. But what, to your mind, has gone wrong here? So look, most of the API companies in the current quarter, uh, they have two problems to deal with. Uh, first problem is the high volume base of last year. So last year, many of the customers stocked APIs. And you know this year, because they have that stock still getting liquidated, they aren't ordering as much. So volume, low, volume growth is low or negative in most cases. And second is uh, your uh, regular pricing pressure because the COVID environment has subsided. So some customers are you know asking for a lower price and then you have the raw material pricing pressure because China has increased prices of raw materials. So that's impacting margins. Now, Solara, like most other API companies, faced similar problems in the business, which is obviously reflecting in the results. And to my mind, for all these API companies, uh, maybe excluding Solara, but for other companies at least, uh, the pressure is very transitory because as they uh, you know, pass on the uh, price pressure or the raw material pressure to their customers, the business will come back. And next year, you know, the volume base will also be normalized this year in FI22. So next year, growth will also be normalized. Uh, so for other API companies, you know, we're very constructive. We are extremely optimistic in healthcare uh, portfolio that we manage. Uh, however, for Solara specifically, they are going through a business transition. There is a change in business strategy. And, you know, whenever that happens, you have to give the company a few quarters to get their strategy aligned and, you know, uh, do over again. So we don't own any stock of Solara, but we can understand the strategy shift and, you know, uh, that the company will have to take a few quarters to sort of uh, get back to business. All right. Uh, Aditya, you know, as we speak, we have Dr. Lal's Path Lab's numbers as well. I'm not sure what went on there, but the first flash that we had on the screen wasn't looking good at all. I think uh, in comparison to our estimates, it was quite a big miss. Uh, let's pull up the stock. I think it's reacting as well. We'll try to get in uh, more numbers out there. The EBITDA number, yeah, it's 110 crores compares to the 150 crores. Or, so that goes down as a miss as well. But Aditya, you know, if, uh, if I understood that correctly, uh, Solara has its own issues. While you believe that the API theme is still up and kicking it still there is still uh, plenty of uh, potential out there you know i ask you this because we had a couple of numbers supriya well that was a high flyer it listed the valuations went berserk and then the stock is corrected out there solara as well you know a bit of a howler new Lynn laboratories that stock is half from the top uh, from the api pack you still believe there are still good stories here listed in india if yes if you could name a few i'm not sure whether you can do that so uh, I can tell you the names we own in the PMS that I manage. Mm -hmm. So we own something like a new land. We own DV's Laboratories. We own Sequence Scientific. We own Loris Labs. So, you know, uh, this is a business where you can't monitor the business quarter over quarter. You know, mm -hmm. your customer orders get bunched up in a few quarters and you do extremely well in that quarter. In the next quarter, you won't get a repeat order from the same customer because he has six or nine months of inventory. Right? Yes. So you have to look at it from a year-on-year -year basis. On a 12-month basis, you cannot look at these businesses on a one or two quarter basis. And I think that's the mistake majority of the investors make and hence the swings in stock prices that you see. But, uh, you know, as a long-term investor, you can use these swings to your advantage rather than, you know, buckling under pressure. So, uh, Aditya, so, uh, you know, this whole obsession about finding the next DVs, uh, you think is misplaced? Uh, uh, there's going to remain one DVs? Uh, no, I think there will be several winners in the API race. You will be able to find the next TVs. You just have to look harder, mm -hmm. and you have to look and you have to wait for a longer period of time. Uh, one or two or six months just mm -hmm. isn't enough. So, which which according to you has the potential to be the next TVs? So, I have named the stocks that we have in our portfolio. We have DVs, we have Loris, we have Sequent, we have Newland. Mm -hmm. We have these four API companies in our portfolio, and I think some of them may become very very large companies in the future. Okay, all right. Uh... Uh, you know, Ekta was just telling us about strides as well. Uh, let's say, I don't know, investors must be running out of patience. I remember the stock around 900 rupees. If I'm not mistaken, today it's at a 52-week low. It's at around 380, 390 rupees odd. Uh, you know, clearly they have been guiding for a recovery in the U.S. business. It's not happening. Now they've shifted that story to FY23. There is some money coming in as well at a much higher price. Any view on the stock? So look, my view on the U.S. generic business has been very, very well, uh, you know, sounded. I, I've told uh, multiple times that this is a commodity business. It's unpredictable for the as much for the business owner as for us analysts and fund managers. Nobody can predict this business. It's a very difficult business to do. 
and therefore uh, as a long term portfolio as a long term shareholder or a portfolio manager uh, this is not a kind of business that you would ideally like to hold or buy mm. uh, so i i in our portfolio you know we stay away from companies which rely a lot on us for earnings mm. because we know the us generic business is sort of structurally out of favor right now the buyers are consolidated they have too much bargaining power the product is absolute commodity very little differentiation and too much capacity still to come online so we don't like the business model at all and you know we stay away so we don't own strides we don't own orbindo we don't own many other companies which solely depend on the us or majority depend on the us for earnings because that's a very unpredictable business and what investors today really want is a predictable business you know they're willing to pay a higher price for a predictable business than to pay a very cheap price for an unpredictable business so that's where we lie we we lie with the predictable businesses our our faith lies in them our money is where our mouth is we are betting on companies where growth is much growth and profitability both are much more predictable okay uh, aditya will uh, leave it there today thanks a lot for for joining us uh, uh, let's now welcome our alpha